In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to install Ableton Live packs, as well as how to create one, if that's something that you wanna do. For those of you who follow my channel, you know that I do some music production tutorials here on this channel. And part of what I do is allow you to download some of those project files. I do these through Ableton Live packs and what these packs are, are essentially compressed files. So basically you've got a folder with all the contents of the project, including samples, the MIDI, and any kind of database kind of connections as well. Everything gets compressed into one folder, which is a smaller file size than the original. And that makes it easy to share. And it's a good way of archiving your projects as well. If you've got loads and loads of projects, the file sizes are a lot less than what it would be if you store them as regular folders. I've had a couple of instances where people have actually downloaded my packs and for whatever reason they get confused about how to install it. This is what triggered this video so I can go ahead and show you what the steps are involved in installing one of these files as well as creating one. So on my screen here what I've got is one of my packs as you can see it says the file extension here is a .alp which I believe stands for Ableton Live Pack. Now to install this you could go ahead and do it in a couple of different ways. So one way is to have an Ableton Live project open in front of you and you can go ahead and click on file and say install pack and then basically you can locate where the pack is. I'm going to go ahead and just show that up here, drag this across and you can go ahead and say open and straight away it will prompt you uh, for a location to install the pack. Uh, the other way is you can come out of live. Basically, if you don't have to have live open, you can go ahead and double click on the pack from your browser and it should automatically open up an instance of live. Once it's opened up, you will see again the prompt that asks you where would you like to install it. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and install it on my desktop. So I'm going to say open and straight away it starts unpacking the files onto the location. So now this is step one completed. What we need to do is come out of uh, this Ableton session here, this Ableton project here. So close out of that. And we want to go ahead and locate the program on my desktop. So I've just clicked on my desktop here and I can see that I've got a Ableton project file. And inside here, I've got a few folders. It's unpacked it into the samples. So all the, the samples that have been used in the project are here. And the actual project file .als is actually here. So I can go ahead and click on that, double click it. And everything should open up inside Ableton Live intact with all the tracks and any processing that I've actually done. Okay, so now we've actually got the project open. You can see that we've got several tracks here and all our automations and everything that the original project has in it is actually intact. So this pack here is from one of the projects that I've previously done. There's a video on that. I'll put a link in the description so you can go ahead and check that out. From this project, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can now uh, save this as a pack. What you can do is, first of all, you go to File and then select Collect All and Save. What this does is it brings in any external samples that you've used in your project. It pulls them into the project folder. That way, nothing's missing once you've actually completed the process of making the pack. So you do that as the first step. And then what you want to do is, is then go up to Manage Files which opens up the file manager here on the right. You can actually get to the file manager by going to view and then coming down to file manager here as well. Along the file manager here are some options. We want to go to where it says manage project and it now opens up some uh, collapsible uh, tabs or collapsible options. We want to look at the various options just to make sure everything looks good. It tells us here project location and uh, where it's actually stored at the moment. On the project contents, it tells you the file size and it gives you um, options about, it tells you the various things such as the media files and you can actually view those if you wanted to, which opens up across here. 
Uh, you want to have a look at missing files just to see if there's anything missing. It's telling me that there are three files missing here. I know from um, what I've done that these files are not important, but if you wanted to, you could click locate and uh, do an automatic location of these files. If you've already obviously got them on the computer, it should marry them up. Um, in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go back. Uh, one important thing to note is that sometimes you might bring in samples into your project, but you don't decide to use them. You delete them from the project itself, but they are still stored inside your project folder. And this can take up a significant amount of your space. So what you want to do, if it says any unused files are here, you want to locate those and delete them so, they'll, so they don't take up too much unnecessary space inside your pack. And the final stage is to uh, do the actual creation of the pack once you've cleaned up your files. So you do this by just clicking on that create pack button. And again, you can select a location. Obviously, I've got a pack there already or I've got a file um, folder there already with the same uh, thing. It's not a pack, actually. This is the project because the, the pack was in my downloads folder. So I'm just going to create a new folder here and just call this test pack. And I'm going to save the pack within this uh, folder on my desktop. So once you've clicked save, this can take a little time. As you can see, it's processing everything now inside my project and it's creating the pack. And we've got the prompt here to say that the pack has been successfully created in the location that we have told it to create the pack. So we're going to say, OK, I'm going to close out of Ableton, go back to my desktop. So this is my desktop folder here and you can see that test pack that I've created. And right now we've got that .alp file, which I can send to anyone. And just to show you as a comparison, the file size for this, if we look down here, we've got it as 122.5 megabytes. And the original project, which I created this pack from, if we click on that, and just pull up the information here. It's telling me that the file size is 282.9 megabytes. So you can see there's a drastic difference between the file sizes. So hopefully that's, that's helpful to anyone that's looking to install packs or create their own packs. Thanks for watching and take care. See you next time. Be good.